Welcome to the Football Show on PLZ Soccer, sponsored by Arnold Clark. Great to have your company on this Friday. I'm Peter Martin in the studio tonight, as ever. Alan Ruff alongside Barry Ferguson as we look ahead to the weekend's football and, of course, discuss some of the headlines today. Okay, before we look back at the two Europa League games last night, uh, let's look at that story of the SFA offering Queen's Park a pound. I think they might have been watching some of the old car shows on Dave, where they make a derogatory offer, Ruffy, and then hope that somebody bites. Yeah, I think in the early stages, they, they probably thought that uh, Queen's Park needed the money uh, more than them, you know, and offered thinking they would move. But it wasn't the case, you know, obviously there was a lot of money, a lot of things behind the scene we didn't know about, you know, who owed what and what was going on at the place. But no, it's just a, a silly offer to start negotiations. And uh, but I think at the end of the day, I think Queen's Park got the deal they wanted. Yeah, absolutely. And without, you know, SFA battering is easy at the best of times, Barry, but to, to give them some kind of balance on this, I, I think there was an element of Queen's Park having to be realistic as well. Anybody who was buying Hamden had to inherit certain debt mm -hmm. um, with the stadium. Yep. So I think Queen's Park had a lot of soul searching to do to try and realistically get to a point where both of them could come to some sort of middle ground. Yeah, I, I agree with you. First and foremost, I think offering a pound's a bit disrespectful yeah. um, to Queen's Park. I know there's a, a bit of debt when when the SFA are trying to buy Hamden off, off Queen's Park, but I'm, the, I'm in the, the, the same um, bit as Ruffy. I think it's a good offer. They got just over £5 million. I think Queen's Park um, will be happy and they can just move on and start to rebuild Lesser Hamden and make that into a decent enough stadium. OK, uh, you can give us your thoughts on that on Twitter at PLZ Soccer, <laughs> our Facebook page and, of course, YouTube as well. Whichever platform you decide to watch the programme, don't forget, tell your friends you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, Europa League, um, I spent the greater part of the evening settling down to watch Rangers against Celtic. Uh, Rangers and Celtic in the Europa League, I beg your pardon. Um, I'm going to say, first of all, well done to Rangers, well done to Celtic for two great great results and now I'm going to ask uh, if you want to argue with me on the point that I thought Rangers uh, could have been hammered, um, thought they were woeful in the first half, better in the second, better in the second um, <coughs> and I thought Celtic were just one paced and poor. Yeah, uh, I think both of them, uh, as I think one of the managers said, that's the level that they're at, you know, playing against these sides. You're right with the Rangers game. The Rangers game was a bit one-sided. Without them creating an awful lot of chances, I think Alan McGregor just had maybe one save in the first half, and the uh, Rangers were just sort of are trying to sit in and, you know, and, and, and stifle the whole game. But the second half they come out, and it's amazing when you get that goal, it, it lifts everybody. But you're right, if you look at the chances in the game, uh, I think they'll be Villarreal will be kicking themselves that they never put that game to bed. But again, as you've said, you can't take it away for Rangers. If, if you said to Rangers you were going to get a point out of that game before the game started, you'll take it. And if you can go away from home, uh, as they have done, and, and pick up points, pff, it can only be good. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I still think that the, 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 the key point here is um, Steven Gerrard is building a side. Um, and when you look over uh, the 90 minutes, I'm sure Rangers fans who made the journey there will have been more than happy. Rangers continued their fine form in Europe, taking their run to nine unbeaten games with a 2-2 draw away to Villarreal. It was a nightmare start for them after Backer gave the hosts the lead inside a minute. Scott Arfield equalised, but the draw was short-lived, Gerrard scoring two minutes later. Rangers kept themselves in the game and a Kyle Lafty goal cued big celebrations and a well-earned point. Well, Phil marched them. I thought the second goal was top draw, Barry. Yeah, I, I thought it was a great goal. Going back to the... Uh, I think he's went there in the first half with a game plan. Have you watched it? Uh, Tavernier and Barisic never really get forward at all in the, the first half. I think he's went there a bit cautious and he's realised at half-time, look, if we start to get at them a, a bit 
they, they'll be there for you. You'll create a chance if you can score a goal. So certainly I agree with you. I thought the first half wasn't great, but the second half was a, a massive improvement. Once they get the goal, he's went and made the substitution. I thought when Middleton, uh, Middleton the young boy, came on very direct, I thought he changed it. Yeah. I've got to be honest with you. And then um, I thought the second goal was a, a great team goal. Great ball for him, Barisic getting down the line and a great <coughs> cross in. And Lafferty just had to guide it into the, into the net. But <coughs> I says, I says um, on Monday, uh, sorry, on Wednesday, I would take a point. I think they'll be delighted because um, I think towards the end they missed a couple of guilt edge chances, a couple of headers. Um, but all in all, they were a decent enough team, Peter, but I, I wouldn't say they were a, a top team. And no. I, I think if Rangers did have the the kind of mentality they had in the second half. But if they had that in the first half, I thought they could have maybe have come away with even more than a, a draw. Yeah, but 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 can I uh, quantify it by this? I mean, there's two things I wanted to get your thoughts on. I mean, yeah. technically, they were better. Yeah. <clears throat> but it was Villarreal with nine changes from the team that played mm -hmm. at the weekend in La Liga. Nine changes. Yep. So it wasn't exactly their top draw team that were out there I think you know I think as I mentioned to you I think Rangers are, are, are growing but I still think they need and we'll get on to Celtic in a minute I still think the teams need somebody that can either control the midfield take the ball and make passes yep. you know somebody can beat a man I mean we're, we're short of that in Scotland I, I agree with you I spoke to you off camera about it I think Rangers are missing a midfield general somebody who can control the game the tempo of the game I think that's the thing that Rangers are missing defensively they look a lot better there's no doubt about that um, the two fullbacks getting forward they can create um, goal scoring opportunities in Lafferty can finish him off but I do looking at it last night I was delighted with, with the point of course I was yeah. um, but I still think we miss somebody in that middle of the park who can who can run a game yeah <clears throat> uh, see when a manager mentions character and guts mm -hmm. that means he's <laughs> he's fully aware of what's missing in the team so he talks about the positives which are character and guts mm -hmm. the rest of it is what Barry's talking uh -huh. about you know and he's saying you know that the Premier League is when he says the Premiership is a priority you know, I, I think Steven Gerrard's looking at the score he's got and realistically thinking, you know, if we get out of this group, pff, yahoo, get the flags out. Mm -hmm. You know, start seeing where he can finish in the Premiership. That's the immediate thing. I understand why he mentioned mm -hmm. that, Ruffy. Yeah, well, they're, they are. It's, it's another level of European football. They've come out of a group that were just sort of a minnows they were playing, you would expect them to win all the games. But this is another target they can go for. And if they do get out of the group, it's something that they can go for later on, you know, but I, I just feel that the more games they get in European football against better sides, the better they'll get, you know, but I think that they'll just take every game as it comes. He, one thing about me, he's no, he's an intelligent man. He knows that they are missing um, one or two top quality players. Um, look, that, that's the biggest thing that, that jumps out at me now. The difference in this Rangers team is they've got a lot of character. They go one down, they come back, they go two, two, one down. And they show great character and determination. But as you said, and I agree with you, I still think they need that wee bit of quality. And I'm sure he, he will know that himself. Yeah, well, Celtic Park, what about the Europa League? Celtic against Rosenborg. Celtic got their Europa League campaign off to a winning start with a 1 0 win against Rosenborg. It was a game of few chances, with the introduction of Lee Griffiths kicking the game into life. The striker showed his instinctive nature to head home from close range late on, leaving Celtic joint top of Group B with Red Bull Salzburg. OK, Ruffy, I've seen this movie a million times before. Great for Griffiths to score the goal. They got the three points. That's the most important part of it all. But it was like sticking your thumb in a vice grip. It was painful yeah. to watch. Yeah. Uh, and Celtic, like Rangers don't have a player who can go past and create something. Mikey Johnson comes on and looks as if he, he, he's got a bit about him, but they don't have a player in the middle of the park still that can control the game. Uh, I, I just don't <coughs> think they've got enough creative players going forward. It's, it's this same monotonous, boring square ball. Yeah, well, it's been there for, for a year now, you know, and they obviously haven't done anything about it. But for me, the whole night was just flat, you know, from being at a Champions League night against Man City or Juventus or Barcelona, the players up their game. They, they really rise to the occasion when that music starts and the stadium is bouncing. For me, that competition last night was just a nothing. I, I, I thought the players just couldn't get themselves going. I didn't think the supporters got themselves going. 
and they were very fortunate to get the goal at the end of the day. You know, but if you look at Celtic's games in the last seven or eight games, they haven't been running over the top of people. They've been just nicking a wee goal here, a goal there, and uh, that's the way it is just now. But I think that's just, we've spoken at it on numerous occasions on the show, it's a team that needs freshened up. It's yeah. a team that has been so successful over the last two or three years, and it hasn't been refreshed. Yeah, well, uh, the only thing that's freshened up is the bank balance. Um, as far as the game is concerned, <coughs> no surprise the manager praised the match winner. He's vital to, to this club here in the squad because whether he plays or whether he's on the bench, he wants to play for Celtic. You know, he's got that hunger. And it's just also him realising as well now at 28 that when you're at the biggest clubs, there's always competition and you have to fight. And he does that. And nights like tonight is brilliant for him because he knows when he comes on, if he gets a chance, there's a big chance he'll score, and we need that in the team. So it was a, a he's a great guy to work with. Like all strikers, they want to play, but they can't play in every single game. But I know that whether he plays or whether I bring him on, we have a chance to score. Yeah, Lee Griffiths, uh, I think he actually mentioned to the uh, crowd last night, <laughs> he's the number one. He had a few expletives in there as well, but he, he mentioned it to them. Um, I think they'll be lucky to get out of this group. After last night's performance, certainly, um, looking at them, they've not got the same energy, the same zip about them. Celtic, uh, look, I, I've said plenty of times before, I think it was the ideal opportunity during the summer to go and bring in two or three, uh, freshen, like, go into the starting 11, freshen it up a bit, <coughs> and it's obviously not happened, and it's just not the same Celtic yet. Look, I had a couple of friends that were at the game last night, they said the atmosphere, the fans were starting to get on their back a wee bit. Um, so this is this is new to this Celtic team. Um, see how they handle it, um, the pressures. But Lee Griffiths does what Lee Griffiths has always done. He comes on and scores a, scores a goal. He'll be disappointed he's not been playing. I thought Edward was really disappointing last night. Um, yeah, didn't show at all. No, for nine million put is it nine million pound they paid yeah. for him? But he didn't show me anything. The, the only two when I watched the game last night, for me it's the, the two and it's the same two all the time. Scott Brown and Kieran Tierney sh at least show a bit of grit and determination and hunger. Um, the rest of the Celtic team, I didn't see that. It looked very, very flat. Yeah. Um, and if you're an opposition manager in the league, looking at that, you, there's a, a real chance certainly for <coughs> to play Kilmarnock on Sunday. I'm sure Kilmarnock will be right up for this and right in their faces. Yeah, this is what the manager had to say about obviously the change from Champions League to the expectations of Europa League. The, the Champions League level is always going to be difficult for us, but I think again this is another year where we can strive to make another step forward in our European experiences. You know, qualification was absolutely vital in the in the other competition. We arrived into uh, Europe after Christmas last year and in the idea this year in, in the competition can we go uh, further so still fantastic teams but we want to show that we're learning and we've got good experiences and, and we want to put those experiences uh, and go as far as we can in the competition Give us your thoughts if you're a Celtic fan on that performance last night uh, on Twitter, Facebook and of course YouTube as well. Kilmarnock against Celtic. Uh, usually at the end of the season they <coughs> hand out uh, the gongs for manager of the year. They should hand one out for press conference manager of the year as well because uh, it's between Craig Levine and Steve Clark for me. Steve... <laughs> Steve Clark is an absolute joy. He doesn't do many gags. I think that picture sums him up, really. But when he actually opens his mouth, it's absolute quality that comes out of it. Um, today, it was one of the most disappointing things for me is of the five league games we've played, three of them have been decided by referees. And he says, that's not correct. That's 60%. It's too many. One in our favour, two against us. It's not correct. Well, do you know what? I like him. He just speaks his mind. He speaks how he's feeling. Um, he's dis obviously been disappointed in the, the referee uh, refereeing decisions in the games that Commander have played, and I'm all for that. Look, he doesn't hide behind anything. He comes out and says how he feels, and I think that's the way it should be. I think that's the way managers and, and players should come out and, and speak the truth and speak how they're feeling. Yeah. Okay. Quickly, then I didn't get your thoughts on that. In fact, we'll go through them all at the end. Uh, the, your predictions because it's nip and tuck now between me, you, and Ruffy yep. as far mm -hmm. as the mm -hmm. uh, you know the points total is concerned. But I'm going to nip through Ruffy to uh, a game on Saturday. I don't know if you're aware of this. On Saturday, there's football matches on that people go and 
uh, and watch um, now that you've been forced into it with the Jags. Uh, I'm going to go to I'm going to go to the place where I lived for a long time. I'm going to go to to Edinburgh to see Hearts against uh, Livingston. I'm really looking forward to it. Jambos, you know, I don't think they've lost against Livingston Livingston in 12 games, so I think they'll score a few. Yeah, I think uh, they're on a high just now. I think Tynecastle's not the place you want to be visiting, but they've certainly had a couple of good results, so they'll go there thinking they can take something out of the game. But Livingston? Yeah, 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 I think so. I, I think uh, they'll go there, they'll be organised. They seem a really big side, really robust, you know, dangerous at yeah. free kicking corners. And the way you're but, saying that, no, uh, no, 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 no. The way get, you're saying all that, you have built it up. People in Livingston are going, oh, we really like Ruffy. No. This is fantastic, no. he's complimenting the side. Uh, but what? <laughs> Well, when you ask me the prediction, <laughs> <laughs> I think Hearts will win. Yeah, OK, right. Um, listen, uh, the great thing about it, the arguments that have been going on, the back pages have been filled with them. Craig Levine's great. He's thrown a grenade towards Dundee United. They've come back. And then John Suter's back, the manager, up and said, listen, I wasn't happy at Dundee United. They were playing me right back, centre back. You never knew where he was playing one week to the next. Yeah, he's, he's another manager. Again, you either like him or you don't like him. Um, but he speaks his mind. And yeah. I, um, Again, I have no issue with that. Um, and obviously John Suter's come out and, and backed his manager, which you would think he would, he would do. Yep, I'm looking uh, right now at uh, the next game and I'm saying to myself, if we're talking about a real clincher as far as bookies, look at managers possibly getting the sack, we've mentioned it week in, week out. I think if Dundee were to lose to Hibernian, that's the straw that breaks the captain's <coughs> back on Neil McCann. Yeah, we've been saying it for a couple of weeks. He's obviously he's mentioned it himself. He's he's under pressure. He needs to get a result. Um, and obviously they're playing Hibs. Who <laughs> I think Hibs are a, a very very good side on their day. Um, defensively they're a bit iffy at times. Um, but I can only see Hibs going up there and winning. I think Hibs have will have too much quality for Dundee. And then it's a decision that obviously. The Dundee board will need to take yeah. Yeah, whether they back their, their manager because they did back him in the, the transfer window. Neil went out and, and brought in a few players. Um, so Do you know what I think they like? I think they like character and guts. Yeah, well, that might be a, a mixture of an experience and, and young players playing in the side. And every time I see them, and even in the, in the games I saw them this year, they've had chances. I mean, good chances, and sometimes we don't take the chances. If you're weak at the back, you're going to lose games. But yeah. as far as the weekend's concerned, depending on the result, I think it, it, it depends on the manner of the result and the manner of the performance. I think yeah. that'll be the two things you, you'll be judged on. Well, I'll tell you, it's one of those games where Effie Ambrose must be thinking, yeah, Dancer Kasunga's playing for them, so that'll take the heat off me. Because yeah. every time we watch Dundee, he gives away an absolute owler. Yeah, it's, it's been the same. You know, the, sometimes you go into games and you think you're playing well, and all of a sudden there's somebody at back loses concentration, and all of a sudden you're a goal down or you're losing a goal in the last minute. And that's what's been happening to That's been the case for Dundee. I, the, Nearly must be going crazy. Some of the, the decisions the defenders have made and the games that I've seen, obviously it's just been highlight, a highlight. Sorry, I've not seen the full games, but the, the decision-making of the defenders must be a worry for them. Yep, absolutely. Um, I, I'm looking here at Aberdeen against uh, Motherwell. Uh, I think this is a great game in the making. Uh, conflict in styles, but Aberdeen, we haven't really been talking about them too much. I don't think they've started yet at all. And if you look at the, the league table, uh, that's not what you would have expected them to be. I know it's early on in the season, but they're not getting convincing results. And I think Motherwell will give them uh, a good game at the weekend. I think Motherwell will, will expect to go up there and maybe take something out of that. Barry? Um, I, I, I'm with you. I think it's going to be a cracking game. As you say, Motherwell, big physical team. Aberdeen have kind of changed their style, try to get the ball down and, and play. Um, but look, I think Aberdeen are due a good result. They're due a, a good one and I fancy Aberdeen. Yeah, um, he's not too worried about Shinny and Gary Mackay Stephen being out of contract in the summer. It's a bit early for people starting to worry about players who've got uh, the full season ahead of them. I mean, I think now the way the nature of football is, Clubs like to get them signed up on a deal before they can start looking at January and be out of contract or at least allowed to sign for someone else. Yeah, no, I don't think these are two players they would have <coughs> a problem with. I think these are two guys that look as if they'd want to play. A team like Aberdeen, they'll enjoy uh, everything that goes with that. You know, if you're that far away in a team like that, you've got to have a close bond with everybody in the, the team. You've got to go on with, well with everybody. And I think that looks as if it's the case. I don't think 
they they won't sign a contract. Strangely enough, uh, do you agree with me on this? I don't think Aberdeen or Hibs have really got going this season yet. No, that, that is why I think Aberdeen need a big performance and a result. And the same with Hibs, um, I don't think they've they've uh, come out of first gear yet. Yeah. So there's a they two I think are, are due good performance and good results. But go back to Shinny and Mackay Stephen, he's got to try and keep me to. Shinny for me is a real driving force and Mackay Stevens has been their best player this season. Yeah. OK, um, what about uh, Hamilton Ackies against St Mirren? I was contemplating this one as well, but then I thought to myself, I want to try and see a, a, a game where maybe, uh, I, I don't know, I think Hamilton, I, I'm, I think they're going to get down, Ruffy. This early, I can't believe it. <laughs> no <laughs> no I'll tell no you, way I'll tell you why. I know, I know, but I just, we've watched them and I just don't see anything. Unless they make some signings in January that transfer them, I don't see anything that can cause teams problems this season. Well, already we're looking at the teams who we think will be down the bottom, you know, and you look at uh, Livingston have had a, a reasonable start, you know, so they're going to be down there, there's no doubt about that, but these are the kind of games they need to get three points at, or yeah. they will be in trouble. Yeah, but you're not no, going to be no <laughs> <laughs> in case they escape for a fifth year. Um, listen, it's, Martin Carney, he's got the, his work cut out. He's been desperately trying to get players in. He's got a few got a few experienced ones, managed to get Keatings. If he can stay fit, he might be a threat for them. But I don't know. St Mirren is a different kettle of fish. I think they made a, a, a real masterstroke this week in getting Gus McPherson back because that will add a bit of stability in the background where he can go and take the heat off the manager and, and, and go and work out football things. He's a he's a brilliant, calming influence as a director of football. I think it's a great uh, appointment. Yeah, there, obviously there's been a big um, up, upheaval with Jack Ross moving. I think he controlled the football inside it. And obviously with him leaving, going to Sunderland, obviously Stubbs has come in and it's not really worked. So I, I think, you know, I think it's a masterstroke. Gus knows the club inside out, he knows how they operate. And I'm sure he'll be a massive support to the new manager who, <laughs> he came in and he got off to a flyer against Celtic. I know they didn't win, but they got a point, yeah. which is great. And I think, I think they'll kick on a wee bit, St Mum. OK, time for predictions, guys. <laughs> Let's have the scores as well, Ruffy. Uh, okay. Rangers against St Johnson. I'm going to go Rangers 3-0. 3-0 <clears throat> there, OK. I've gone 2 nothing, Barry. Yeah, I've went 2-0 as well, Rangers. Yeah, OK, so you're just trying to stay neck no, and neck no, with no, me. No, uh, no. Uh, Celtic, uh, Kamarik against Celtic. I think Celtic might sneak it by two goals to one. Ruffy? I'm going to go Celtic 2-0. <laughs> yeah, Barry, come on. I'll get the same result to win. Right. Celtic. Okay. Uh, Hearts against Livingston. I think the Jambos will win three nothing. There you are. Yeah, I think I put two nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go Hearts to win convincingly. I think three one. Three one. Okay. Did you have three one in your? Yes. Three, you got the same as me. I've got. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dundee against Hibs. I've got one one. I've went Hibs to win this by a couple of goals. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but as I said, I don't think Hibs have started. Dundee are in a bit of a rut. Kenny Muller suspended as well now. Yeah. Will be a big player. So, so if it is Hibs to win, is that the end for McCann? Well, it's up to the board. It's going to be difficult. Six games with uh, no points. Um, OK, Ruffy? Yeah, Dan, like you, I, th I think uh, this might be the, the game that Dundee will get a point. One Aberdeen, Muller. Aberdeen 2-1. Yeah, I think that too. Yeah, I've went 2-1. Yeah, OK, so <laughs> we're neck and neck. Uh, and the last one, Hamilton Ackies against St Mirren. I think I've got the Ackies winning by a goal to nil. I went one each. I've went St Mirren to nick it. 1-0. Yeah. OK, there you are. So there is some kind of space between us as far as the predictions are concerned. Uh, you can give us your view on everything we've been talking about and hopefully you'll join us on Monday again for the football show. From Ruffy, Barry and myself, good night.